News Now is brought to you by the Bank of Guam, the People's Bank, Docomo Pacific, island-wide, worldwide, the choice is clear. From the Pacific News Center in Hagatnya, Guam, here's Clint Rigel and Janella Carrera with Betsy Brown and Roselle Romanes. PNC Sports with Blake Watson and Weather with Joanna O. With your news now. Hoffa and welcome to PNC's first newscast of 2015. I'm Janella Carrera. And I'm Clint Rogel. Thanks for tuning in. Topping your news tonight, Guam police have arrested 44-year-old Yu Hua Han for punching a 10-month-old baby in the face at the Micronesia Mall yesterday. Police say she was the woman seen in the video that went viral on social media. PNC's Rosel Romanes has more in this report. Thousands of residents were shocked, disturbed, and upset as this video of a woman punching a 10-month-old baby girl at the Micronesia Mall went viral on social media. Alyssa Esser, mom of 10-month-old Alexia, said this incident took place at Fantastic Park yesterday afternoon, a little after lunch as she was heading to meet with her husband, Fred, and three-year-old son, Roman. I was heading um, to meet my husband and my son who were at the arcade. And I was holding my daughter kind of like this, and the next thing I know, someone from behind me came and punched Alexia straight in the face. As seen in the footage from the mall surveillance cameras, the woman punched caused the baby's head to fly back. Grabbed Lexi, who, kind of, who fell somewhat forward, and turned around, and she was running away. I screamed out, someone just hit my baby. She stopped and looked back at me, like, almost to see if someone, if they were hurt. She just kind of stopped and looked and had just a strange look on her face and then kept running. Fantastic Park employee Cole McCann told us he chased after the woman who ran towards the food court area. When he caught up to her and told the woman they caught her on camera assaulting a baby, McCann said she replied with, no, that's not me, that's not me. We asked Alyssa if the woman was aiming for her or Alexia. Most definitely her. She, her arm literally went past me, like past my cheek. And she was aiming to hit my daughter. Without a doubt, she purposely was trying to hit my daughter. Apparently, the woman's first target wasn't Alexia. The woman was seen following Fred and Roman around the arcade before the incident. As a result of the punch, baby Alexia suffered a bruised eye and swelling to her face. Honestly, when I watch the video, it makes me sick. I can't even handle watching it. I just cry. The reason we decided to put it on the news was because we want her caught. We don't want another baby hurt like this. I mean, there's no reason to hurt a baby. A day after the video was posted by Alyssa, police have arrested the suspect 44-year-old Yu Hua Han. GPD acting PIO Paul Tapao said they identified Han from the images posted on social media and with help from the Superior Court probation officers. They arrested Han at Oriental Massage where she worked. PNC found out that she was arrested in 2009 for a similar incident in which she allegedly stabbed a father and his baby with a knife at Lone Star Restaurant. Alyssa confirmed. We were contacted by another mother who said I saw the video, I recognize her, and she's the same woman who stabbed my baby. If it is the same woman who stabbed a baby, then for sure this woman needs to be put away so that she can never, ever hurt another child, ever. It's just not right. Two children being injured, just unthinkable to me. However, Judiciary of Guam Acting Administrator Josh Tenorio said the court cannot confirm that a case exists pursuant to Guam law on the matter of expungement. Han was charged with aggravated assault, assault, child abuse and child endangerment. She was booked and confined. Thank you to everyone in the community for coming forward and, and all the support and thank you to the police department. They have been tremendous and we have every confidence that they are going to get this woman off the street and in jail. And Rosal Romanes, PNC News.
Well, what a cute baby. Well, we're really glad that Alexia is doing okay. United Airlines making an emergency landing after one of its engines blew out mid-flight. It happened last night. Guam International spokesperson Rolanda Fasu Amelie tells us that United Flight 183 departed Guam around 8.15 in the evening, headed for Manila. Then about two hours into the flight, the United pilot was forced to turn around, notifying the Guam airport ramp control that it was making an emergency return to Guam. Fasu Amelie says the airplane made it back safely around 11 p.m. as airport officials were on standby in case of an emergency. She says airport officials were initially notified of problems with the aircraft's right engine. The Boeing 737, a twin-engine airliner, was reportedly flying on only one engine when it headed back to Guam. United's Director of Asia Pacific Communication, Koji Nagata, in a statement said the flight had 146 passengers and six crew members on board at the time of the emergency landing. Nagata said the aircraft was experiencing engine issues. He adds that an extra flight, UA-2050, was built to accommodate the passengers whose flight was canceled because of the emergency landing. That flight left at 2.47 this morning. Two men were arrested in the early morning hours of New Year's Day for assaulting neighbors within an apartment complex in Anigua. It happened at the Conchita Apartments in Anigua. Guam Police Spokesman Officer Paul Tapao says Red 12 Tifong and Raimundo Ludwig attacked two residents. The attack began at Bradley Place in Anigua when the two suspects chased after an individual. One of the suspects was armed with a knife. The three ended up on the second floor of the Conchita Apartments when a resident stepped out of his unit and helped subdue the suspect with a knife. Another resident stepped out to see what was going on when he was attacked by the other suspect with a chair, causing a 12-inch laceration to his head. Both Tafong and Ludwig were charged with aggravated assault, public drunkenness, and disorderly conduct. They were booked and confined. The island's first fatal accident of 2015 happened only 15 minutes after midnight yesterday. 34-year-old Gary Camacho Jr. was pronounced dead at 3.46 a.m. New Year's Day after his dirt bike collided with a wild pig in Chalanpago. After hitting the pig, police say Camacho lost control of his dirt bike and was thrown from it. He was found unconscious and unresponsive in the northbound shoulder of the roadway when officers arrived at the scene. According to witnesses, Camacho's son was following behind on another dirt bike when the accident occurred. Leno Uggen came outside when he heard the teenage boy calling for help. Well, at first I was watching TV until I heard a boy crying and he's calling his dad, 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 get up. You know, so the dad did not get up until he called again. Then that's the time I came out from my house. Then I called 911. Ugin also knew Camacho from the neighborhood and remembers him as a good man who was always taking care of his family. Senators failed to pass a bill that would have repealed their raises today. Lawmakers were supposed to go into session this morning, but instead spent the morning in closed-door caucuses. By this afternoon, it appears they weren't able to reach an agreement on Senator Frank Ogan Jr.'s Bill 436 that would have rolled back raises just for senators. Only three senators voted yes on the measure, namely Senator Frank Hogan Jr., Senator Mike Limtiaco, and Senator Mike Sinicholas. Sinicholas previously told PNC that he was planning on introducing an amendment to the bill to include the governor, lieutenant governor, and cabinet members in the rollback of raises. However, no amendments were made to the bill, and it was voted on in its original form. Well, let's see what's happening in sports with Polly Suba. Can you believe it? 2015 already? In the 80s, I thought we would be riding hoverboards by this time. Maybe next year, but in just a bit, we go over some of the last games of 2014.